All right. Hey, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Thursday Night Mod Fight. I am Dr. Leo, here with my co-host, uh, the Chaotic Bear. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, man. How are you? I am doing pretty good. So, you know, sorry for the little technical issues at f- uh, first. You know, there's always a little bit of the gremlins and everything. But we have a very fun uh, match this week. So on the left, we have Anik, uh, who is currently facing the wrong way. Hey, hey, uh, hey, Jax, can we get her uh, flipped around? Thanks, buddy. Hey, right. and then we have Daniel TCG. So Anik is going to be on uh, Soldier Stompy this week. And so she's favored a lot of, uh, you know, fast white decks. Uh, so when the Luris white death and taxes was around, she played that. And then and uh, she's always been on death and taxes and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a variation of death and taxes, except for all the, all the creatures are soldiers. And they're surprising a lot of soldiers, right? Yeah, we were uh, looking at those deck lists and there's a lot of legacy cards that uh just happen to be soldiers uh we were looking at palace jailer she just gets to run palace jailer yep. just happens to be one uh, mm-hmm. and she's actually running the full four of both two mana thalia and three mana thalia oh she's yeah well, going on there so it's got the taxation effects you know making the mana cast uh, even more and then also you know the tap effects hex uh the big thalia tapping down creatures and uh non-basic lands and also giving you like a very solid fight all right, so it's going to be really interesting. And, and uh, how many aerial responders does she have in the deck? I think it was like one or two, right? She has th- three aerial responders. She has three aerial responders. Three aerial. Yeah, this one is the Delver Killer. Or so. Yeah, I mean, she's it's also be... running the full four of Ancient Tombs, it looks like. So she's going to have opportunity to just smash face. Um, depending on yeah. what Daniel does, of course. Daniel on, Daniel on Dredge is uh, probably going to be putting a lot of pressure on her in the first couple turns. Yeah, so Daniel TCG, a very, like common player here on the discord he plays a lot of uh, a lot of dredge and he plays it well i think he's been featured on our thursday night mod fight as well but uh yeah like it's gonna be a really interesting match because i think anik really is gonna need a lock piece on turn one mm-hmm. and then hope to god that she can outrace race i mean the engine that is dredge but dredge almost has game one wrapped up entirely yeah, she doesn't have any main deck cape for it, really. Uh, Lenny Athelia would be nice just to keep his stuff tapped or uh, mm-hmm. make, make everything cost a little more be- just because Dredge's mana is so painful for them. Yeah, and uh, uh, Daniel only in the one Hogak in his Dredge list, so mm-hmm. looks like uh, if she does land the big Thalia, though, the three mana Thalia, that will actually make all the zombies that get flashbacked off of the bridge and such like that uh, enter the battlefield tap and can't... Uh, uh, what's it called? Can't convoke out the Hogak. So that is going to be a good, like, little tempo thing. Yeah. I mean, for <clears throat> Chromox, for Ancient Tombs, she can, she can get some stuff out there, but thankfully a lot of her disruption also happens to either be free slash cheap in Chalice of the Void, or it also just beats face. So if she can destabilize them a little bit, then she'll yeah. have in there. Yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting matchup. So I think they're trying to figure out Mulligans. Yep. Do we have and... his on the play draw? That's going to be a big deal. Uh, I don't know. No. Oh, and I throw, oh, throwing a card back, I think. And I think yeah, we're about we to start. Mulligan at least once. Yeah, I think. And we think see so. Daniel's on, on the play. Oh, that's good for him. Yeah. Dredge on the play is near unbeatable game one. Yep. So he leaves on Jimson minded to Faithless Looting. Mm-hmm. So Chalice on one might have been a good start there, but unfortunately she's on the draw. Yeah. And this being gonna... LED... A dredge, of course. Oh, yeah, grave troll, stinkweed imp, stinkweed imp. So, two yeah, dredges that back, or even just on his next draw step, he's got six more in the bin. That's a great start. Yeah, that's eesh, eesh, eesh. And of course, if he did have an LED, though, he could play the LED, crack it, and flash it back. So, yeah, exactly. And so, and absolutely knows what she's up against now. Oh, yeah, by far. Uh, very few decks start off like this. I mean, the powerful Faithless Looting has been banned even in modern, so... Yeah. A powerful engine. Everyone knows it's playing. And... Well, Karakas means she won't lose to Hogak. Yeah, no Hogak beats. But that means that's not an Ancient Tomb, so unless she has a Chrome Mux here, it means she won't be playing anything turn one. Yeah, and she's really going to need, like, a turn one Thalia or something like that. Oh, there's right. a Chrome Mux. There's a Chrome Mux, yep. Is that a Suppression Field she's exiling? Yeah, that looks like a Suppression right. Field. 
not really going to do much in this match. No fetch lands, nothing like that. Besides, like, uh, oh. LED. Nope. Uh, well, it actually doesn't stop LED because it doesn't affect mana abilities. Oh, yeah, it's a mana ability. So. And that looks chalice like a chalice on one. On one. Familiar yeah. start for me. <laughs> yeah, you do like those loam and chalice decks, so. Yeah. Solid, uh, solid a play. Of, there's a lot of it in this meta here, so he's going to dread direct to grave troll, of course. Let's see what he hits. Yeah, of course. All right. Let's see. There's the ox. Ooh, the ox and the Icarid. A couple more dredgers and an and an Arc amoeba, and the engine is on. Yeah, but I mean, he has no cabal therapies, no bridges yet. Thankfully. Yeah. Yep, no cabal therapies. And Cabal Therapy can still be flashed back by sacrificing it and sending it to the bin, but then it'll just be countered on the stack by the Chalice. So it is a way to still get something into the bin, even through a Chalice. Yeah. Uh, Have you seen... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, and it's going to be on and to catch catch it anyway. I mean, you you always make them have it, so... Oh, yeah. And uh, have you seen this Ox of Agonis card yet? I have, in fact. I think it might have been Daniel that played it uh, on stream against me a few uh, weeks ago when I was on that uh, Rug Cascade deck. Yeah. yeah that card is insane. It just yeah, says uh, Dredge Yeah, I was the one commentating. Dredge. Yeah, it Dredge. says Dredge 8, and it is just get a free 5-5, five, five, basically. Well, a red red for a 5-5. Five, five. Sorry, Exile 8. Or, yeah, yeah, Exile 8. But Dredge 18 if you've got uh, the Triple Grave Troll. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. I think uh, I, I was talking about it with... Uh, uh, Jax, I think, who was my commentator that had that week, and uh, I was saying this card is absolutely busted. It's insane. It's like I hadn't seen it. I'm like, just watch this, and he escaped it and just dredged twelve cards and just threw out every. It was insane, and I think you actually lost that uh, that round, but you ended up taking Very the much. entire match. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, just uh, just casting it is so much value. I mean, red red isn't even really that hard for him. Like he, yeah. he has all these rainbow lands. So, yeah, and it looks like he's just passing. Yeah, yeah. he must not have had any other. Any he must other not have. Effects, yeah, well, well, you didn't have a second land drop. He looks like he skipped his land drop. Yeah, I just wonder. It must be Dredger stuck in his hand or something because pretty much yeah. anything else he could cast. That's a three mana. That is a Ranger Vios. Uh, All right, so we'll see her see her fetch. Wait, that's not a Ranger of Eos. Is, is that a Ranger of Eos? What is that? No, she's not running Ranger of Eos as preeminent captain. Preeminent pre captain. captain. Yep. It's a three mana, two, two, first strike, and when it attacks, she can put a soldier into play, tapped and attacking. So it's like Kali of the Vest for soldiers. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it looks like she has passed. Yes, and now we see an Icarid being brought back and a dredging of a Gogari, or a, a not Gogari, a Stinkweed Imp. Yep, and he hit another Narcomiba off there. Still no, still no bridges, still no Cabal therapies. No bridge, no Cabal. Some Street Wraiths. So, it means he'll continue to miss his land drops. Yeah. And yeah. looks like, uh, he said it was a 2-2? Yeah, it's a 2-2 is first strike. Okay. So she can swing on it. She can, she can, uh, she can block that uh, the Icarid and it just dies in combat. So like the Icarid is isn't even good. It's like sack fodder at this point. But there's no bridges for value. Yeah. So and it just it just comes back. Yeah. Um, I th- wonder, if, I wonder if he had a, if he thought he had a way to uh, get in there with it. I think. Uh, oh, okay. So we see the Icarid and the Narcomiba coming in. Uh, I think this is a free block for Anik. I would I would block yeah. that uh, Icarid right away it off. Um, oh yeah i mean it, he also has just infinite uh cards in his graveyard to excel to that icarid so yeah he here doesn't do anything and he, he yeah exactly if he didn't buy it back then he if he hit a bridge then he was yeah value there no it, no it is the correct play to definitely bring it back but yeah uh unfortunately just has hit nothing and looks like the bridge is on the bottom of his deck yeah at least he's keep, he's hitting dredgers to keep the engine going. At least, yeah. I applaud Anik's choice in basic land there. Very nice. I love I love the ungludes. I think those are gorgeous. All right. So she has she attacks and attacks triggers. gets it herself. That's another one actually. That's a, oh wait, a second preeminent captain. Oh, so do you put the soldier from your hand into play? Yep, it's like Kali of the Vest. It comes in. Oh, and that's or I guess, so uh, good. What's the boar that everyone loves now? Uh, what's it called? Ilharg, Ilharg, Ilharg the raised yeah. boar, yeah. Except it that's, stays out. 
That is so good. Oh man. So that's a that was a swing for four. For four first strike, yeah. He's probably not yeah. gonna jump with the Dark Mew. He does not. No. Does he play Dread Return in his list? I don't think that's common anymore. Uh I don't I don't think the Dread Return package is that common anymore. So we got two Icarids coming back. Oh no, just oh, one yeah. Icarid. And uh Chet's telling us here that that's a uh that's a actually a third uh preeminent captain there. Oh, they, that's, they, I can't see oh, it because of the glare. Oh, okay, she, yeah, she yeah, yeah the glare. One after combat. Oh wow, so that's that's three for a captains. If she has any sort of, um, God, uh, does she have an anthem effect in there? Uh, she does not, except for uh, Dara War Chief makes them cheaper and also gives them plus one plus two. Yeah, so if she has a Dara War Chief. That that's a pretty solid uh, hit yeah. off of these three captains. So, so oh, he does hit a bridge, uh, bridge from blow here. I mean, no matter yeah, what, he she, does have she, a single bridge from blow. She's going to be applying some pressure. He really needs to hit something here. Oh yeah, and so, so he has mana though. Yeah, and it's cabal, cabal therapy. therapy, chalice and trigger. She catches the chalice. Yeah, yeah. I think he just throw it into the graveyard to to feed the bridges. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you're yeah. not doing anything else right now anyway. But I mean, I would yeah. definitely cast it just to. Oh yeah, trigger. it is the third parry. I'm in a camp, uh, captain. Oh, this is Soldier Stompy is showing legs in, in game one. This is very impressive. Yeah, this is just Goblin Lackey, but gone nuts because you just get a you don't have to hit yeah. with it and it just comes in swinging. Yeah, seriously, and it's got first strike as well, which makes it very well oh, to uh, to attack into a lot of different uh, blockers and such like that. Yeah, just bonus. Oh yeah, even, this is great. even swings in with those uh, narco memes. He doesn't leave him back to block or anything. So. Yeah, yeah, Daniel should be at sixteen. Uh yeah, Anne's life total is correct. Swing yeah. on it, and uh, yep, Anne's life total is correct. There's all right. So recruiter of the guard. That's actually ooh, very interesting because she'll ooh, be able to ooh. fetch any soldier and then put it in attack with the other triggers. Yeah, yeah, that's very. Oh cute. wow, that's that's this this deck has legs. I am really impressed. She switched yeah. from being a prison uh, strategy to a very fast aggro strategy, and is actually aggroing out dredge. This is really impressive. I yeah. really like this deck now. I mean, Daniel has definitely stumbled a little bit here, but uh, man, yeah. that that, pre that uh, preeminent captain is very powerful. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I would even, I don't, she, she's definitely got some top end with uh, Captain of the Watch, which is very, uh, Captain of the Watch is another anthem effect, actually, so she could actually go get, uh, oh, she can't fetch it with Recruiter of the Guard. Yeah, she can't, because uh, that's a 4-4, four, four, I thought. Uh, it, yeah, it's a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Oh, oh it only gets toughness to realize. That is a palace jailer. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. I, so I like I like where she's going with this. So she's is going to put it in the palace jailer, get rid of the token. That's the only blocker because this is all before blockers yeah. have been declared. So yeah. she's going to put it and put it in, get rid of the blocker, and be swinging in for two, four, six. Uh, recruiters a one, one, seven, yep. eight, she nine. Has yeah, that's nine total. Plus, that's... she has another soldier in her hand. She still has one more trigger for the yeah. uh, recruiters. Yeah, that is that is kind of busted. Yeah, if she doesn't have a third one, I would have been tempted to just go get another recruiter to beat in for one more. But oh, what's she could what's happening? Um, looks like they're post combat now. Or she, she, does she have anything that she can cast mid combat? Cast out has flash. But is there any? Would she be casting out a Narcomiba in combat? I don't think so. Why would she? Okay. Oh, she could, she could be cycling yeah. it. She could be cycling it to try and hit another soldier. Oh, that's true. Oh no! It looks like this is post combat. Interesting. I'm I'm really confused here. I thought the other. Yeah, I mean, maybe she was just trying to like force the block. Third captain. Uh... Oh dang! Three caps. Uh, she gets in for recruiter, two more damage if she okay. recruiter the, um, if she palace jailers during combat, but if she waits until after, then she just gets to eat one of those creatures. So a little bit. Of yeah. Uh, I don't know which one's more important. It's probably the yeah. next turn, no matter what. Yeah. But. And she does get to draw at the end of the turn for having the monarch. So. So we see Daniel dredging here. Did she draw at the end of the, uh, the turn? Um, I was not watching. Uh, we can we? Oh. Can we check with their table spotter? She wanted Monarch Trigger. Yeah. So it looks like Daniel is in his turn trying to figure out what to do, or are they discussing it? They may be discussing it with the spotter. 
Yeah. She did draw. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay. Just want to make sure. He's, he's swinging in so, with Icarid and Narcomune, so no matter what, he's going to get the Monarch back. Uh, yeah, and giving Dredge a full draw is less scary on the end step than it is during the draw step, at least. Yeah, sure. So, like, and things... I, is he running... I don't think, I think Legacy Dredge runs any of the uh, what's it called prize amalgams. But if he had, no, if he, he not. yeah, if he if he dredged on the end step with the prize amalgam, that wouldn't come back until Annex last uh, end step. Yeah, so. I mean, hitting an Archimeda or a Ridge from Below would be the only value he would get off that. Yeah, exactly. But even then, that's like kind of scary because then you expose it uh, on the end step and can't really take advantage of it. So I don't know if Dredge even benefits from the Monarch. I think it actually gets. Worse. I mean, he for the always has the option to take a natural draw and try to find to take a natural for draw. Ops. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It looks like Anne took the four damage though. That's... Oh, so Ant uh, Anne yep. should be at uh, thirteen. Yep, that's true because the Palace Shaler does not have her first strike. Yeah, did the Icarid. Yep, and looks like. We thought this yeah. was uh, going to be kind of one-sided, but both of these decks are putting up some game here. Oh, yeah. So, second the Icarid here. We we'll need to make sure he remembers to draw it. Oh, he's dredging back the Glory oh. Grave Troll at the end of the turn, it looks like. Yeah. Oh, two, sep two Sepulid Coliseums in the yard. I love yeah. that word. He's oh, yeah. Running four in there, yeah. Well, I mean, having a free, uh, free almost kind of brainstorm... Um, oh, it's just uh, babe. Yeah, it's like a uh, like bizarre, but in Legacy, you only get it once. Yeah, well, only if you have threshold, which is the easiest thing to get in, uh, <laughs> get in Legacy. If he doesn't have threshold. He's not winning the game. Yeah. I remember when Uro was first uh, spoiled, and people were like, "Well, it's gonna be really hard to." And people were like in Pioneer and other formats were like, "It's like gonna be really hard to put five uh, five other cards that you want to exile into your graveyard." Meanwhile, in Legacy, I'm like, "Oh my yeah. god, this card is yeah. gonna be so busted." I have five cards in my graveyard at the end of turn two when I'm playing Nick Fit usually. So Anne, it looks like trying to figure out she's gonna full on swing here. Yeah, it looks like she's just well, going the whole team. She's yeah, one short, I, oh, I was gonna say she's one short or lethal, but never mind. She's not now. Yeah. Does that look so, like that's well, uh, well, axes? Yeah, but uh, Daniel does have uh, yeah, he what's has called blockers. the the zombie blockers in order. Yeah. To... I just and he's, all... he's priced into blocking. He doesn't really have a choice here. Yeah, exactly. And Anne does have have uh, first strike in a lot of those blockers. Well, a lot of those attackers. So it's one of those things that. She is going to be left with the board state, even though they're all two twos. Yeah, and I mean he'll be at at four life probably, assuming he uh, oh, doesn't yeah. block with the Narco movie here. Yeah. Yeah, he also needs still... to make. That's he also needs to make sure that uh, none of Anne's creatures dies, because if if one of Anne's creatures dies, it's yeah. going to get rid of the graveyard, uh, the uh, the bridges in the graveyard. Yeah. So swinging in with the recruiter of the guard is just great there because oh yeah he's, he can't block it with any of his creatures. Oh, it's free. It's yeah. free damage. Does he have a Does he have a second bridge in his yard yet? I still haven't seen a second bridge. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he's still on one bridge. Okay, because that's the new art cabal therapy, I think, in his uh, graveyard. Yeah, he's got two of those. Okay. It is the new art. It's, uh, Sorry, the neighbor's really dogs. Oh, no worries. Oh, Hold so on one second. Seeing, uh, certain art. Hey. So it looks like he is going to block the Nova. I assume he's blocking the two twos. It doesn't matter which. He's leaving the two zombies behind. So that means that he's taking seven, nine damage down to two here. If he doesn't assign blockers for there. Oh, we do have two bridges. Thanks, Beyond. Beyond says that we are on a second bridge. Oh, he is putting out two zombies. All right. So he's going to be able to go a little wider here. Although she hits basically any flyer, that's also very good for good for her. She has a lot of lot of live draws. Yeah. With some other random 
people's dogs and yeah so and then my dog decided that she wanted to get uh, to was worried about everybody so she's just huffing real quick she's just worried all right so are they picking it up? oh okay it looks like they were explaining some interaction but he's scooping it up oh oh did daniel uh, scoop that one up he's they're both scooping up so i'm not sure daniel got it okay I, i'm curious what the like uh deterministic line he had there was okay I wonder. She still had five creatures out. Anne would have died to crack back. Daniel had lethal. He only had eight, eight, or he had four zombies out. That's only eight yeah. damage. Two Icarids in his yard. There we go. You're right. Oh, two yep. Icarids in the yard. Okay. Oh, I didn't All see right. the second Icarid. Yeah. It, so I'm, okay. It's fun to yeah. Side, I'm curious Aunt, what all uh, Anne has in there. So she has yeah. one Containment Priest, two Rest in Peace, two Thorns, three Council of Judgment, two Fairy Macabre. Two Holy Light and three Armageddon. I mean, okay. What are you grabbing? Uh, well, first of all, the two uh, two Fairy Macabre right away. Hey, uh, really like that. I I would actually almost hedge a bet for a uh, Thorn to bring in actually because of the fact that you can cast that off of an Ancient Tomb and that is enough to slow down Dredge that it can give you that tempo advantage that you might want uh, want in this. I mean, yeah, you do don't... have some. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we saw that game. He never hit a second land drop. Oh, no. Oh, like, if you have a thorn on the field, there's a lot of times when they can't cast their flashback spells or yeah. they can't uh, do anything like that. So I think bringing in another lock piece, because you're going to have cuts like Suppression Field. Suppression Field is automatically just dead in this deck. So I think that, you know, cutting probably all the Suppression Fields and maybe, like, one of the big Thalia because it's not going to make that huge of, di of a difference. We'll make a uh, we'll for some thorns and some graveyard hate will really help. And there's no rest in peace in, in her sideboard, she, right? She has two rest in peace, yeah. Oh, and the two uh, rest in peace, yeah, and I mean, the two rest in peace, obviously. There's a lot of these I would argue about coming in. Uh, Containment Priest has a little bit of value just for, for Hogak. Um, mm. I mean, eh, Holy Light isn't that exciting either, but. Uh, actually, Containment Priest doesn't stop Hogak because you cast Hogak. Yeah, it doesn't... Oh, and it wasn't cast. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but it doesn't yeah. make it. I'm sorry, I had it backwards. I was thinking it was like, uh, Graf Digger's yeah. you couldn't cast it out of the graveyard. Yeah, no, uh, so it's, it's the reason why Containment Priest doesn't stop, uh, Uro and such like that. Because you actually cast that from your graveyard. That makes but, sense. Uh, but, I, I definitely, the Rips, definitely, I think the Thorn and the Fair Macabre, at least, at the bare, at bare minimal. Yep. So uh, let's look at look at Daniel's here. He has two Lotus Petal, one Chain of Vapor, four Nature's Claim, a Dread Return, two Leyline of Sanctity, four Leyline of the Void, and one Ashen Rider. What you got? Uh, so she's a white deck, so I wouldn't bring in the reanimation package at all because you're afraid of yep. Containment Priest right there. Uh, but I would definitely bring in uh, the four Nature's Claims because you saw that she's a prison deck, and you also saw that uh, she is um, uh, is white. So she's going to have Graveyard Hate like Rip. So I think having just the four Nature's Claims off the bat, yeah, I don't really like anything else. Anti hate. Yeah. And I think having too much of, uh, you know, cyborging all in too much is just not worth it. Yeah, I don't see anything else in, in there that is even useful against her. I mean, Chain of Vapor gets you out of some spots sometimes. but Yeah, not, not worth it when your Graveyard Hate also has an ETB effect of oh, yeah. exiling your Graveyard. Yeah, if she were on Leyland, I mean, he, he, he doesn't know, but he has to assume rest in peace over Leyland of the Void and Mono White. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I think the rule of thumb is when. So back when I played uh, Red Black Reanimator, the rule of thumb was if there's a white, if it's a white deck or a, a major white splash like Maverick, consider rest in peace. So, you know, but that was also God. I think I was playing Red Black Reanimator like five years ago, maybe four-ish years ago now. Oh, yeah. I feel like I, I lean on Leyline. In any deck that, uh, even if it has white, if it doesn't have any counter magic, then to back me up, then I feel like I really want that turn zero interaction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But every, I think everyone has their preference. That's one thing that's like very personal. People have their, their preferences and that kind of thing. Yeah. Personally, for me, if I'm playing a discard based deck, like if I'm playing Nick Fit uh, or any sort of like bug mid range, just like hey, grinding with uh, like him to Turok and stuff like that, I'll bring in Surgical. Because yeah. uh, surgical and then another personal favorite of mine being onboard ego, 
just being able to like rip uh, their combo piece out and unmoor ego you can do cards like dark depths yeah what's, and... the, what's the casting cost on unmoor ego is that one blue black one blue black yeah okay. so it's 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 a really fun fun card and it's one of the, my like flex slots a lot of times in my sideboard depending on like how hateful if i am for uh uh, what's it called? But if I'm playing a force will uh, for graveyards or, or combos, uh, if I'm playing a force will deck, I'll oftentimes play a uh, ley line just so I can defend it. So, yeah, uh, with when I have counter magic in my deck, I don't mind rest in peace being a little bit slower if I can just get yeah. something important on turn one or two. But yeah, definitely takes. Yeah, uh, it's one of those things that building your sideboard for graveyard hate is. I think that like, that's like one of the hardest, but yet most. Important because those are the matches that you'll guarantee you lose if you don't have the right graveyard hate. Yeah, I mean, I think you just need some. But there's certainly oh, yeah. some cards that line up worse or better against others. Like a uh, surgical extraction would be awful against Hogek, for example. Oh yeah. But um, sometimes grab, getting to grab all four copies of something in their yard is just great, though. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Hey, hi, little mango. Thank you for the attention. But thank you, folks, for uh, uh, tuning in for this uh, this week's uh, mod fight. Hey, you know we have some interesting matches coming up, and we have some pretty interesting brews actually this uh, this week. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that. So, yeah, you know, uh, if Anne has a similar start to last game, I think that she will she'll probably be uh, able to win this on the play. Oh yeah, definitely on the play. She was just on the back foot once he got his engine going there. Yeah. So, uh, hey, chaotic. Any uh, interesting M twenty one spoilers that you're interested in at all? Since well, uh, it's pre release weekend, <laughs> Grim Tutor, and uh, I pre- did pre order one of the foil uh, scavenger cruises. But you know, every spoiler season, oh, I yeah. sort of uh, get real hype at the beginning, and then it's just it's overload. And I just I say I'll play it when the pre release happens. Yeah, so I've uh, I've heard yeah. a couple cards people are brewing around the new accumulated knowledge. Um, doesn't really seem to have a spot in our meta right now, but I think that's got to play somewhere in Legacy. But. Oh yeah, definitely. You, uh, I mean, you got anything for Nick Fit? I thought there, there's some new black card that you're excited about, right? Oh, Village Rights, my friend. Uh, I am so high on this card. Uh, so right now, in a lot of the meta, uh, especially in our meta, uh, we have a lot of exiling effects. So we have a lot of DMT players with their, their uh, Swords of Plowshares, stuff like that. Uh, things things where you'd rather have a card in your graveyard than you would rather have in your hand. Yeah. And having a one mana black oh uh, sacrifice outlet is really like I think like impactful for or for decks that want that sacrifice effect. So I think Hogak is really going to like this uh, this card because you can sacrifice your own Stitcher suppliers mm-hmm. and you can fuel that uh, that plan at the same time as drawing two cards. Like Alter's Reap has always been like jokingly a uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, oh, it looks like we're starting jo- uh, yeah. jokingly played as in fit decks, but I think this is actually a decent so, effect. So it looks like Anne had no turn one play and then missed her lander up on turn two. So Ye- Daniel discarded two hand size and now he's dredging back a grave troll. Yeah, uh, like he's uh, playing this like manalist dredge. Oh man, he- what what did what did Anne keep? I mean, it must go off on with two lands. She's discarding she... her fairy macabre. Oh, okay. So she kept the hand, a uh, one land hand with uh, graveyard hate. Piece, I guess. She uh, hate has piece. piece or something. Yeah. So the fairy macabre definitely keeps things around for right uh, in. Uh, well, keeps her alive for right now. But yeah, I think that she really needs a hard graveyard piece or like a thorn or something like that. Especially since he just now made his land drop. Yeah, so he won't be able to get discard to hand size, but he has one more dredger. Oh, that's actually a Cabal Therapy. What's the very bottom card in his graveyard? Cabal Therapy, uh, I think that is a... What's the discard imp? Uh, what's it called? Very Drain Dressed, okay. Uh, right. Stinkweed imp. Stinkweed. No, uh, no, Putrid imp. Putrid imp. Putrid Thank imp. you. Wrong imp. Thank you, chat. Future Dimp. <laughs> Future Dimp yeah. is the one. So it's Cabal Therapy, uh, Gemstone Mine, uh, Future Dimp, and there is a... Oh, there's a discard outlet. Whoa! That's an LED discard, and we are seeing Icarid, yeah, Icarid. Icarid, Golgari Grave, and activating... Oh, he for blue, and he's sacrificing the... Yeah. Calcium. So there's just... Calcium. 
this is a big turn. I, I don't know how I am going back to this. Oh yeah, this is yeah. Dredger finds a dredger. Dredger finds a dredger. dredger. He's hit two narcomibas, I think, so far. Yeah, I think there's two narcomibas. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Daniel took a risk. He did take a serious risk and a risk here. They're playing this. This is a high risk, high reward play in choosing. Okay, I see my opponent doesn't have a turn one play. Screw it. I'm just gonna discard this card to hand size and hope to God that you're not facing something like a, a thorn or something like that on turn two. Yeah, I mean, it didn't look like he had any way to discard turn one other than maybe LED if it was in his opener. But yeah, I no, I think he had to draw so. into the LED. I think drawing into the LED plus the uh, what's it called the Cephalic Coliseum. Yeah, the oh, fact that he was patient yeah. on there, I think, did pay off. He's going to flashback Cabal Therapy. Oh, and Anne. Anne's hand is gone. It's gone. Yep. Yep, there's the Rest in Peace. Is that a, uh, which printing of Rest in Peace is that? I do not recognize that art. Uh, no, sir. I think that was just Return to Ravnica. Oh, okay. The, uh, looks like swords in the background, but I guess those are the pillars. Yeah. So, well, Anne's getting a second turn, uh, or a second land drop in a third turn, at least, but... Yeah. It's too little so, too late at this point. So she must have kept that handle on the strength of Fairy Macabre, rest in peace, and just didn't find second land in time. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, this could go completely different if Anne would have top decked heck, yeah. the land or yeah. like the Chrome Mox or something like that. A lot of her deck is land. Yeah. So, or Chrome mana sources. Opener, you're right. Yeah, she yeah. has 22 total uh, mana sources in her main deck. Yeah. And now we are seeing just this army of Icarids just being brought back and a Golgari Grave Troll being hang, hang dredged. <laughs> and it is... Oh, uh, man. Graveyard is no longer really a graveyard. It's just kind of a mash of cards here. Yeah, I think there's an Ox even in there. Like, the, oh, is that a Vapor Snag? I can't tell. Oh, it, I assume it's a Breakthrough. If it's oh, yeah, that's a Breakthrough. Yeah, did they reprint that art on Breakthrough? Oh, they did. That is the conspiracy yeah. art on Breakthrough. That's the conspiracy art, yeah. I don't like it as much. <laughs> oh, I try to keep my opinions myself on that, because, you know, some people really love the new frame, but I am definitely an old frame kind of guy. I don't know. There's some cards I love in the new frame, and there's some cards I don't. I mean, I play a lot of new cards, so, like, I have to uh, play with the new frame, but with the old, old frame, I, I just can't. I just love that thick black border. Mm hmm yeah, and so we see here a uh, swing with two of the Icarids. Yeah? I mean, she can cast the Palace Jailer, but... She, I, that means I she wouldn't. draws an extra card. He's going to beat him with two Icarids and get it back. Yeah. Yep, Sorry, and you're taking two, yep, two damage. damage. Yeah, I think... Uh, I think probably the hey, uh, I I would have think that you would want to increase your board state as wide as possible. Personally, hey, I would probably like recruit the guard for another threat or something like that. But well, then she again, doesn't have any one mana hits off of a recruiter of the guard, well, so that means yeah, true. She was only going to get one body on the field that turn, no matter what. Yeah. So he's going to continue to dredge here. Now he he. Uh... He cracked the LED for blue, so he couldn't flash back mm -hmm. these Faithless Lootings, but he's not even going to try to get any more mana for it, though. He just swings into the Icarids. Yeah. Looks like Anne's taking this down to six for the Icarids. I think hey, Daniel is just trying to ride those Icarids until uh, he dies. Yeah. And this and I, don't case. I don't see any bridges in there, either. It looks like he's... Yeah. The, I don't think... Uh, yep. Do you see any bridges in there? No, Beyond is saying in chat as well uh, that, that uh, he does not. So we're going to continue to dredge here. Yeah, so it looks like Daniel stacked the Monarch trigger so that way, hey, that he could dredge first looking for bridges. Didn't hit any bridges, but hit a Narc Amoeba. Wow, these yeah. bridges are just hiding from Daniel today. And that's that's good play there because Palace Jailer probably isn't a card that you see in every matchup in Legacy. It's it it's played yeah. by a couple weeks, but yeah, <laughs> we see the yeah GGs yeah nice. we see the GGs yeah. Uh, yeah but... So that that is the first round to the challengers for uh, this night. Hey, so unfortunately, some 
a very fast dredge uh, crushed the mono white stompy deck, but uh, this soldier stompy deck. I, yep. I think it was still a really good game. I think game one was really fun and really showed the power of the deck and what it can do. Yeah, and I think they just didn't get their own variants game two. It looks like she had already molded the six according to the spotter. So yeah, it looks like uh, five, you got two hate pieces. Yeah, exactly. I think I think it was a solid keep. Just didn't hit the land fast enough. Yeah. So no. Oh. Well, we are going to take a short break as we get prepared for the next round, but stay with us for round two, which we is going to be Argon Platypus, and uh, is it Beyond? Yes, I believe Beyond is playing next round. I'll double check. Sweet. So it should be a fun round. I'd uh, love to see you all there. I hope to see you all there. <laughs> 